What's going on, Paisanos? V here, coming at you with another video today. The meta is slowly shifting. We're slowly seeing what's going to be tier 1. We're slowly seeing what currently is tier 1. And we're slowly seeing Yu Gi Oh players just run and buy all these cards and getting ready for the next meta. And, and whether you're playing combo decks, which more than likely seem to be the only viable deck currently in the next meta, or are you still going back to old school kind of decks? And by old school, I mean like literally about a week or two ago, uh, control decks such as like Salaman Greats, Altergeist, and stuff like that. It really depends on you, the player, which you really prefer, which which really your preference. And of course, we can't talk not just talk about the meta where I'm talking about the cards that are came out on Rising Rampage, and the cards coming out what October 25th in the new set. That's going to obviously create yet another meta. A lot of you players are already convinced that the decks they get now are going to last a while. I'm personally not. I think Konami is giving us you, your players ready for a new tier one deck. With that said, one of the cards used in it is Chaos Emperor, the Dragon of Armageddon. Now, if you're in the OCG, they came with some anniversary pack, had all the hard to get dragon cards, including Chaos em uh, Emperor, the Dragon of Armageddon. Current price point of this card is $1,000 for the super rare, and an Ethan's $1,300 price point. And then you have the Ultra Rare, which is only, you know, slim $8,500. This is the stuff that I look at, like to look at Yu Gi Oh! and go, I, you're doing it wrong. You're just doing it wrong in price support. Maybe I'll make a video talking about the price support in the future and how I think Konami can definitely improve their price support by not just making these really hard to get cards that have very few slim amount of Yu-Gi-Oh players can have access to whether you're part of the team or not. Nevertheless, looking at OCG, this card is seeing play as a one of in the Dragon Link, which seems to be the dominant deck currently over there, which is going to be coming over here, what with the release of the Rocket Structure deck, adding more cards to that Dragon Link variant. But then we have other builds. We still have Thunders and Orcus and uh, not, uh, Thunders and a uh, Crusader variants. Orcus is still a viable deck as well, though. Moving forward, Sayuri just go dread going from a $21 price point for 2018 Megatons, and we're seeing it already hit about $22, $23 easily for the Megaton reprint. As far as the original print, Sayuri just go dread from Extreme Force, it has a $19 price point, but it's already at $24, as this card is seen in extra decks as a one or two of options for these kind of combo decks. Cash Dragon Lemonier was a card that for a long while was relatively cheap. It was in his teens in price point wise. Like what, like 15 bucks averaging? And now looking at it, the market price has a card roughly around $32. But no, of course not. It's at $45 for Cash Dragon Lemonier. A lot of you can play obviously that looking at the combo decks need to use this card. It's amazing. It yanks one out of your opponent's hand. And I think it's really important. You know, looking at the last card that did it, it was banned. Topologic Gumblar Dragon. Yank cards out of my hand get banned but some like can't try and levy near oh that's totally fine and not only that we'll make it level eight so you know helps you go into other cards like is they even here is it, is it, they even hide it it helps you go into um number 38 um next the thunder monsters as you can play as gear up to play either crusader variants pure thunders or hybrid uh thunders uh, mo monsters like thunder dragon dark went from a 12 dollar price point and we're seeing here actually around 15 dollars now as opposed to the other cards we looked at um actually maybe levy near and actually as what well, doesn't count towards that but like so we just skull dread we know it's getting a reprint okay let's just focus on a couple of things here this is getting a reprint in that new hand trap we set of the alternate art set this is gonna get a reprint so, uh, Chaos Dragon Lemon here, as well as Thunder Dragon, Dark, and other Thunder Dragons, which I'll show you in a second, are all in Soul Fusion, But you know it's going to be a Megaton card, which you know is going to go down in value once everyone buys the crap out of the Megatons. And the Megatons is looking really good. I think Konami really did a smart move by giving us this banners, promoting this deck, so you can place a focus on the, on the Megatons at the end of August. I think it's a very smart move financially for Konami. For most Yu-Gi-Oh players, well, it's kind of all over the place. It, obviously, if you need Cash Dragon Levy Near, you gotta pay $45. Thunder Dragon Darker 3 of is at $15. And Thunder Dragon Roar with a $6 market price is the only one that see sees any kind of stabilization being roughly around $6. And then we have Sangon. Oh, Sangon. Now, if you guys watch one of my older market watches, Sangon Watch Pack 1 was always the one that was high value. In fact, look at the market price is $32. And you can see a German Light played it for roughly around $40. Oh, I'm not sure if there's any English version still left. Let's see. I'll let you play, I'll let you play English one. It's about $52 for a super rare Sangon from Retro Pack 1. I always said the best Sangon is the ultra, ultra rare version from Turbo Pack Booster 6. I think that's the best version. It's a cleanest looking version. And it's a hard to get version. No, it's no more Turbo Pack Booster 6 around. We'll look at the card. It's currently $16 with its market price. But it's roughly around $76. After that one's gone, by the way, it's $80 for a ultra rare Sangon. 
it's good cards. <laughs> And the reason I think why Ultra Rare sold out before Super Rare sold out, and I do think Super Rare can easily go up to the price of the Ultra Rares. I, I, I doubt it will happen because collectors don't really care about this. But the reason why Ultra Rares came out because it's more clean looking, it's more it's more clean and fresh looking, and it's Ultra Rare, it's a high rarity card. Yes, Retro Pack 1 is hard to get, more harder to get than Turtle Pack Booster 6, infinitely. But oh, Turtle Pack Booster 6, Tangons are just better. If you ever held two together, you would know exactly what I'm talking about, just on a quick glance of the cards and physically holding them. Um, next, Flame Bell Guard, another card using a Dragon Link. It, it's dirt cheap online, it's a like dollar over the place, until you get the Dual Terminal 1. Dual Terminal ver 1 version, I think it's on eBay, going for about 6 to $10 roughly, and it's sold out over here. Uh, it had a $2 market price for DT1 Flame Bell Guards, well, it's gone. Um, next, guys, World Child's Guard Dragon. Now, I, I felt like with Crystal Nita Fiber, if it was to come out, this card would naturally just go up in value because Guard Dragons might more, see a lot more play. And this card might see play in that deck. But I, I feel like being the fact that Watch Out's Guard Dragon came out in Coded Duelist, which is forever ago in Yu Gi Oh! timeline, it, it, it just. It's, it's no chance this card can really go up in value. Look at the making versions about a dollar, look at the original print version, it's also like $2, it's not that much money. Moving forward, guys, we have Jet Synchro, and hopefully you got this uh, a long time ago when I did a market watch about cards that you might want to consider when Christian Neil Piper inevitably, hopefully, one day, possibly, comes off this, uh, off the, uh, the nether realm and over here to, like, you know, the TCG so we can play it. Uh, but looking at Jet Synchro, super rare version from the structure deck, it's almost near $3, higher than it's $1.81 market price. It also came out as a common OTS one pack 9, which everyone should be able to have this, but a little higher rarity, it's going to run you a couple extra dollars. And then we have Quick Launch, a card in which I believe is um, the one, one of these, I feel like, I think one's getting printed and one's not getting printed, I could be wrong, I think it won't be getting printed in the Rocket Structure, I, I, I glimpse, I, I glance out of like two seconds, but look at the 2018 Megaton version of Quick Launch, it's holding and stabilizing at its $5 price point. Looking at the Circuit Break uh, Secret Red version, original print, Quick Launch, that one's doing a little bit different. As a four dollar market price, it's going for roughly around nine dollars. Cards definitely needed once rockets come out. You can play that even want to just play pure rockets. Still would like to have the higher rarity ones, being a secret from either one of these. And for anyone out there that says, "Hey, Megatons," there you go, guys. Some Megaton value. You guys are just go dread. This card went up. I really do a video talking about Megatons because it has had sporadic value, not enough to merit a good value set, but definitely sporadic value. Up next, Unexpected Die, slowly going up in value. Super Rare coming out originally from Cross Souls with a $3 market price, and we're seeing it for almost in, almost near $4 for the unlimited versions of Unexpected Die. Uh, for an unlimited version, it's hitting almost near $5 uh, for this card. Once again, Super Rare came out in the Cross Souls. It also came out as a common structure deck as well as a common legendary deck. It's dirt cheap, but if you want the higher rarity, once again, you're going to pay extra to get the higher rarity. Then we have Boot Sector Launch, a card coming out in Extreme Force. I believe this is a one of in a deck if you guys do want this card. There's a $4 market price, and name it for Physicians, holding almost near the $4 price point. Almost near $5. And I wouldn't be too crazy to jump on top of this card. Once again, it's a one of. I think a lot of you players are excited to get this card, and that's why we're seeing it have a high price point. I think once you players are bored and done with this card, the price point obviously would decline in value, and that's when you can probably get this card for like a dollar, two dollars. It's a good card. It's most likely needed as a one of, but um, yeah, I want to be break the bank for this card. I'm not putting four dollars on a card that in a couple of weeks is gonna be worth a dollar. This makes no sense to me. Um, next, World Legacy Guard Dragon. So I, I I know I kept going over Savage Strike and I kept talking about it. I kept talking about like cards like Phantasme and, and uh, another card. And I'll probably talk about it a little bit in this video, but I, mean, I always emphasize about World Legacy Guard Dragon. I always emphasize it in the context of uh, Needle Fiber coming off and this card would be good if Needle Fiber came off. But looking at Dragon Links, it's like who cares? I want it's Dragon Link cards. The card says Dragon on it. It's needed. <laughs> card originally had a price point of roughly around four dollars, and looking at the market prices, it's holding. It's it's about eight dollars, uh, but it's barely holding on to that. As you see, on limited versions are almost there nines. First edition is doing the same thing, almost there nine dollars uh, for World Legacy Guard Dragons, and obviously so the cards once again a needed card for the deck. Uh, moving forward, guys. Uh, Tempest is a one of. Now I'm in a weird position. I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Please let me know. Tempest, do you care about the secret rare version? Or do you want original print rare uh, first edition? 
I own both. They both look nice, and I would love to know which one you would like to choose from. By the way, this is being used in Dragon Link and Abused. This card's insane. And um, if you don't have one yet, you're probably going to want to pick one up. They're pretty. They're getting slowly harder and harder to find as it's drying up here in the market for these cards. The good quality ones, of course. Uh, but guys, before I begin saying anything else, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button. Comment down below. Let them know I read every single one of your comments. I'd love to know what you guys want to think about this meta or this new kind of meta that's happening. And if you want to support this channel, guys, I would greatly appreciate it. If you click on the TCG player link, uh, or, uh, a certain percentage goes to support the channel and allows me to do these great videos and constantly look towards upgrading the content of my, uh, and quality of the videos. And I can only do that, guys, if you can help me support it by supporting the channel. Oh, yeah, um, I, I forgot to say a Patreon. Christian Perez is my newest Patreon. <laughs> I'll mention him beginning of my next video, but I just realized that right now. So thank you, Christian Perez, for being a Patreon. Up next, if the World Challenge Justice card has a fi almost near a $15 market price, but it's coming down. Unlimited versions coming in roughly around twelve dollars, twelve and a half, and first edition versions are under thirteen dollars for this card. Now over the weekend, everyone got really excited. It was a triple trishula of a video that came out and and abused it. The world trying to adjust the card. Everyone got, it was like, all right, cool, great. It, it, every time we get like a new meta, someone shows off like a dank FTK version. The last time we had it was like a Cyberdark FTK, and the Cyber Sign did FTK did nothing because nobody played it because you know. The deck is super glass, like a glass knee fragile. It just, it's just, it's silly to see people like freak out about it. Anyway, uh, looking at it, I didn't really pay any mind. And I, I, just, I, I knew that the price point would go up in value naturally and it will go back down in value. Well, it kind of did that a little bit. It went up in value, reached it over here once again, almost a $15 market price. And it's kind of gone down a little bit in value. And yeah, I think this card's going to be used in Dragon Link. I think this card's going to be used in the future almost. It's nonsensical to not believe that. But what I do believe is the fact that cards not going to hold a high price point, being the fact that the Link Dragon has already a bunch of high price cards. And you can't have a deck that has all these high price cards and the deck does not be the best deck in the meta. Because even though it's showing a lot of superiority in the OCG, it's not the best deck in the meta. It's a top contender. It has a lot of... It's, it's kind of like... It's kind of like how Thunder Danger Thunder Dragons was here in the previous season. It was not the best second of meta, but it had a lot of numbers. And it merited a decent price points for certain cards, but not all of them. I do think that's the same same thing applies towards uh, this deck, the Dragon Link deck. And I think that if, even though once again it's a great card, it's going to go back down in value. Not because it's a bad card, because it's a one of, And that's why it's not merited to have such a high price point. Uh, up next... Borlo Savage Dragon is different. $25 price point. The card is going up in value. Unlimited version is holding about $33. First version version being almost near $34 for Borlo Savage Dragon. Being the fact that this card is not only used just in pendulums, which arguably is the best deck in the meta, this card is also going to be seen play in the Dragon Link deck, which looks to be the best deck in the meta. Now, this card merits its price point. It goes to you and says, hey, I'm in this deck, which is the best deck, and I'm going to be in this deck, which is going to be the best deck. You should probably buy me. And that's why I understood why Boil Savage Dragon went up to a high value. Also, because Savage Strikers is hard to find. Um, as a card owner myself, I'll tell you right now, it was insanely hard to get this card, get, get the, the set, personally get this card, and just in general, just, you know, get extra copies of my customers. It's very difficult because this set was really short right out the gate for some ungodly reason. Um, next, Dragoonian Knight Romulus, another card that's being used as a one of, and I think without Needle Fiber, we might put this as a two of in Dragon Links, depending if we get Needle Fiber, hopefully. Uh, market price has a card roughly around $12. Um, the first editions are barely holding up to that price point for $12. The price is going low, and I think the reason why it's going low is because not a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! players are caring about Rising Rampage. And I don't blame them. I mean, yeah, the, the Prismatic Secret Rares are great, and yeah, I hear they're very hard to find. Cool. But you can't really put these out there and not see the fact that Yuga players are not really going to be excited about this because there's nothing in here as far as the T1 deck by itself. Do I think Rising Rampage is a good set? Absolutely. I think it's a great set. But I don't think, I don't think Yuga players are really looking towards this set. And if people are sleeping on something, well, in Yu-Gi-Oh, when people sleep on something, they kind of enjoy it more times than not. Sleep on something good. And uh, we've seen this before with previous sets where Yu-Gi-Oh players are like, this set does not have a tier one deck. This set is trash. Or this set, does this set have anything for fill in the blank deck? No, this set is trash. And then later on, they go to you and they go, for real though, do you have those cards? Because I will seriously cut, sell blood to buy those cards. Stuff like that. Like, it, it's really weird how Yu-Gi-Oh players mentality is. But looking at the Prismatic Rares, once again, something I really personally want myself but uh, these prices are not, it's not worth it. Um, I, I really would like to know, um, another opportunity to talk to Konami and see what's going on with these prices and uh, the 
the releases. I mean, I'm hearing you can play say it's one per case. You can play say it's one to eight from every eight to 12 cases. But to be honest with you, until the physical sets coming out, the cases come out, we really won't know. That's one. Number two, don't buy these cards. We haven't even had the set fully come out yet. And the cards already have a high price point. They're going to go down. It's inevitable. It's inevitable that these cards' prices are going to go down. So just wait. Um, next guy's Fantastical Dragon Phantasma is going up higher in value. No big news. Just want to let you know. Um, it's going to hit $115. It's going to do that. I, I, I don't know anything else to say. Dragon Link, the deck card I was talking about for Dragon Links, use Phantasma. And I think inside, we might main it here because we don't have Max C. And I think this card is insanely good as a staple card. $81 market price, like you paid first edition, it's coming at $83. And um, it's going to hit $85 soon. The price just jumps after that. So seriously, grab your Phantasmas. Whether you grab two or three, I don't care. But you really need to grab this because it's going to hit $115. Pot of Extravagance is almost doing the same thing. With a $72 market price, Pot of Extravagance are limited versions of $76. First edition versions of Extravagance are over $80. This card came out as a, as a $75 price point card during the pre-release Ever the Cyber Strike. Quickly dropped down to around 40s, and now we're seeing go up. And by the way, it's not done yet. This card's gonna go higher in value. Now, whether or not you should pick this up right now, I really can't tell you. It's at a price point beyond where I'm comfortable to tell you to spend that kind of money. But I will say this card would most likely, in my opinion, from what I'm looking at, will continue to go up in value. It's a great card. Moving forward, guys, Dragon's Ravines. Now, obviously, Ramus is going to be good, and obviously, Ramus helps you with Dragon's Ravine. Well, the Cigarette Dragon's Ravines are currently almost at $6 higher than its $3 market price. The Super Rare versions, which I like a lot as well, is about $3 to $4 higher than its 250 market price. Common Ravines are like almost a dollar as well, so you kind of want to grab just one of these, maybe two max, but that's really it. Trillverse Dragons for Ultra Rare right now is something I highly recommend you sell if you have extra copies of. If you want to keep Ultra Rare, me and Max Rarity, I totally get it. I'm going to keep it mine. But if you have extras, I would sell it. Look at Trillverse Dragon with a $17 market price. Um, the card's beyond that, almost roughly around $23 over here. And then after that listing sold, the next one's coming in about $26. Uh, for show reverse dragon a card is getting a reprint in a structure deck as a common yeah It'll be low rarity, but this card is not gonna be 26 in I don't know a couple of weeks when it goes down in value You let me know what to think about that one and then Cypher and Gamma. Now, look at Cypher and Gamma, the price point has calmed down and stabilized. And I want you to buy this card. I really emphasize when I say I think you guys should buy the card. I said it with Pot of Extravagance. I said it with Phantasmus when it was low in value, when, it, when we're in the technically, and we're technically we still are in the off season. And I think Gamma is a card nobody's looking at right now. Let me explain. Gamma right now from High Speed Rise with $10 market price is stabilizing roughly around $10. The ultra rare versions. Super versions are stabilizing roughly around $5. We're getting all the other hand traps reprinted, except Except Gamma. Gamma so happens to be the only hand trap right now that you can get that we know is going to see play with Dragon Links and against Dragon Links. It's amazing it's combos and it's amazing when played as a side deck for combo decks. This card's going to be used a lot in the near future. And we can talk about Gamma being used, we can talk about Delta. We can talk about the ultra version of the Cyphering card he gets, I forgot his name already. We can talk about all that stuff, but seriously, the main thing I want you to get, get the main thing I want you to focus on is Cyphering Gear Gamma, because it's gonna see play, it's definitely gonna see play. Seriously, while you're doing watching this video, pause the video, get your gamma by clicking on my link below, because I think this card's gonna be going up in value. Let's also look at the price points, in which the Ultra Rare has 25 price points, and the Super Rare has 30. Once again, guys, if you're looking to play Dragon Link, or you're looking to play against Dragon Link, you need Gamma. It's, it's almost a non-negotiable discussion we're having here and i highly recommend you guys do get it before the price spikes 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 up to some really dumb numbers being the fact that all the hand traps are going to get reprinted except gamma when whenever we have something that's done and everything's needed and everything gets a reprint except there's one card like gamma gamma will go up in value i mentioned this the other day when which i talked about um not a card actually it should be is it over here uh, a danger card and i can't find it anymore well we'll type it in real quickly um when I talk about dangers and how I feel like we know Suchi Nose is going to get a reprint, even though it's going to higher in value, by the way. Uh, we don't know about Nessie, Jackalope, Bigfoot, Thunderbird. We don't know any about any of these. Now, in my opinion, I don't think Konami would, make, would short print us on Thunderbirds or Chupacabras and below. I think Konami wanted to really get us. They would not print up Dana Nessie, Jackalope, or Bigfoot. They want, they're going to take one of these and go, okay, one of these are not going to be able for Yu-Gi-Oh players to have access to. Looking at what's currently banned, limited, semi-limited on the ban list, Sujinoko, Nessie, and Jackalope, which leads me to Bigfoot. Now, I could be wrong, and, and in the Megatons, we could have all these cards being reprinted, which would be great. 
But no one Konami, it doesn't work that way. They usually like to grab one card out and go, see this card, it's so expensive. And then everyone freaks out, price go up in value, and, and then they release a reprint. And then everyone's like, whew, thank you Konami. Well, looking at the Megatons, there's a good chance Bigfoot might not be in there. In fact, I'm not surprised if it's not. It's a great card, used for any decks that run cycles like this uh, as a makeshift trap popper kind of the card. But nevertheless, it's still a card that um, it's relatively cheap right now. When a market price of currently 12 to almost near $13, near its current price point, I think Danger Bigfoot is a great card. And a card that I would highly recommend you guys grab, if not two of, just in case. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. The card gets reprinted, the card goes lower in value, it goes it go lower in too, too much in value, and you can always trade it away. But I always recommend you guys go in and grab certain cards like that and just pick them up, trade them up, and stuff like that. Anyway, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching my video. Please make sure to subscribe if you haven't Eddie. Hit the like button comment down below and one thing like i said early in this video if you would love to support this channel but you don't want to put money to patreon like my buddy over here christian perez who did who did join patreon no big deal you guys can click on the link over here in tg player and buy cards for yourself a small a small percentage of that goes to the channel and allows me to upgrade quality and equipment of this channel and allows me to do more videos which i would love to do so one thing guys if you want to support the channel bookmark that link down below and i really appreciate if you do that guys it's your boy v and you play zanos you play zanos have a good day